Hey, it's Matt Haynes. Thanks for stopping by. And uh, I'm going to be starting this rather large canvas, or it's large for me. I tend to work on smaller scales. Uh, this is approximately four feet by three feet. Um, and uh, I've got the perfect tool for working on something larger like this, and that is a ginormous brush. I uh, picked up a couple of brushes recently. Got a six inch and eight inch brush. They're just paint brush, regular like, you know, deck stain painting brushes off of uh, Amazon, but they work great for getting really interesting marks. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mix up, mix up some paint and I want, I'm gonna mix up some dark gray paint. Well, actually I'm gonna do Almost black. It's a Payne's gray that I made myself, but it's almost black. Can't really tell the difference. But what I want to do is I want to make it really watery, like ink, because that that will flow much better on using this brush. It's going to get really messy. I should make sure I don't have anything that I don't want ruined. <laughs> As you can see with the uh, tarp on the wall, I uh, sometimes get a little messy. All right, so... I'm just gonna pour some out on my palette. This is just cooking parchment paper. And I, I tend to flip it over and use both sides. And I'm gonna pour a little bit of water. I know you can't see when I hold it low, but pour some water. Oof, that is super runny, which is what I want. Now, like I said, this is gonna make a mess. Hopefully I don't have to take a shower afterwards. Need to needs to flow. I don't know if you can see that. I've got some lumps of paint there. So it is a very, very dark bluish gray with some lumps. Again, this is just starting. This is getting some marks down, but it's fun. Okay. Get my brush nice and wet. And let's go. All right, look at that. I can go sideways on the brush too, get some different marks. Look at those drips. And now some splashing. All right. Now what, right? You know what? I could just stop there and just let it sit for a while and then come back to it, but let's let's play around some more. Um, so that's that's one tool that I really like. I'm, I just got these, but I'm really enjoying them. And there's another tool I want to show you. Now you all know what palette knives are, right? Uh, in fact, I was using one to kind of mix up the water with the paint here. Palette knife. Okay, but they're tiny, right? So what do you do if you need a giant palette knife? You get, these are um, frosting knives for the kitchen. And they're so much cheaper than palette knives too. And you can do some really, like really bold, big strokes, right? So get some white paint here. Just gonna run a whole batch of it along there. And then let's go. Maybe a little bit up top here. Now I'm obviously moving really fast here, but we, if you move slower, you can get kind of a different pattern. Okay, so that's tool number two. <laughs> it's just so big. All right, and I'm not the only one to do this, but and I've used this one before, but this is a um, 
a utility knife blade. And obviously this has been used a lot. It's fairly sharp anymore. I have a little bit of masking tape over the back side of the blade because that little, the part where it slots into the internal parts of the knife tends to actually cut my fingers on some of the, the, the brands of blade. So I use, I use that to help protect my fingers. I've never cut myself on the actual blade so far, knock on wood. Okay, and so we can just make some marks. Right, you can use the, the flat, uh, the, the whole edge of the blade, or you can use the point. It just gives, right now we have big texture on here, and this just gives me a little bit more detail. And spreads around. Look at that extra gooey lusciousness there. I don't know if you can see that. <laughs> and I'm going to just wipe it off. Because again, most of this is going to get covered. Or all of it's going to get covered. This is just getting things started. Was there anything else I wanted to show you? <laughs> you could also use this to apply paint, not just as an edger. This is a, uh, well, it's a paint guide. It's a 20, 24 and a half inch paint guide. You know, if you need that extra half inch. This would work better, I think, on board. Because on canvas, of course, you're mashing into the canvas a little bit. Like that. Huh. Okay, I'm intrigued already. Okay, so it's just a quick, uh, quick video to show you some of the tools I've been playing around with lately. And, uh, you know, all of these, everything I've shown you here is not for fine art. We've got the We've got the, the wide painter's brush or stain for deck stain. We've got our frosting. We've got our, our blade. I don't know where I put my blade. And then we've got this edger. So, um, you know, we're saving money and making massive, massive marks. And it's a lot of fun. All right. So tune in next time. This was just a brief one. And uh, I hope you're having fun because I sure am.